Hey guys, today we'll do a review of the One Piece cookbook. As you guys know, I've always been a big fan of the food in One Piece. So, when I heard that there is an official cookbook, I was very intrigued. And in this video, I'll make some of the dishes and give you my honest opinion on this book by the end. So, when we open the book, we're greeted with this beautiful illustration of the straw hats eating. After that, we get this table of contents which shows that the book is divided into different sections. The book follows a standard formula, where they show a picture of the dishes and on the next page they show the recipe and often the inspiration of the dish. In the book, the dishes take inspiration from different moments of the manga. From moments like when Sanji fed Jin his rice dish or when Sanji made the soup for the staff of Bharati. It also features some iconic dishes, like Luffy's favorite meat on the bone, or Blackbeard's cherry pie. I myself made three dishes from the book, to see if they tasted any good. For the first dish, I made Sanji's fried rice. We'll first need some spring onions. We'll cut it in half, separating the whites from the greens. Then, we'll cut the white part. After that, we'll cut the greens, which we'll use for garnish later on. And then, in the book, they stated that we'll need some corned beef. I'm using this cured beef, which is quite similar. We'll also need to slice up some of these cremini mushrooms. And after that, pour some oil into a wok and get it piping hot. And then, we'll add the white parts of the onions along with the mushrooms. Let the veggies cook until they get some nice color. Then we'll add the meat. Once they all get to know each other, we'll push them aside so we can add an egg. Let the egg cook a bit and then mix it all up. And finally, add the rice followed by some soy sauce. And now mix it all up. And that's it. The first dish, which is the fried rice for gin, is done. Next up, we'll make Absalom's beef croquettes. I like how this is not necessarily inspired by a food in the anime, but rather by a moment where Sanji said he'll turn Absalom into a croquette. To make it, we'll start by dicing up some onions. Cook the onions in some oil until they're translucent like this. Add some ground beef to the mix, and then cook it until it's nice and golden brown like this. Once it's brown, take it out and move it into a different plate. Next, we'll boil some water and add peeled potatoes to it. Cook the potatoes until they're fork tender. After that, we'll mash the potatoes up. Add butter, salt and pepper to the potatoes and mix it up. Then. We'll fill a bowl with flour, a bowl with beaten eggs, and a bowl with Japanese panko. After that, we'll try to make these buns with the mashed potatoes. We'll fill these buns with our meat and try to close the hole. Once it looks like a nice patty, we'll dip it in flour, followed by the eggs, and finally the panko. And then we'll heat up some oil and put the patties in. Fry them until they're beautifully golden brown like this. Add some cabbage to the plate, followed by two of the beef croquettes. And that's it, Absalom's croquettes. And for the final dish, we'll make a dessert, which is Sanji's fruit Macedonia. This dish was the first dish that Sanji made for Nami back in the East Blue Saga. We'll start by cutting up some strawberries. Follow this up by some pineapple, an orange, and a banana. And then we'll throw it all into a bowl. Add a squeeze of lemon, a squeeze of orange, and a tablespoon of sugar, and mix it all up. Serve it in a nice wine glass, and garnish it with a beautiful sprig of mint. And that's it, the third dish, which is Sanji's Fruit Macedonia. And with that, we've made three beautiful dishes from the cookbook, and now it's time to taste. But before we do that, 
I want to tell you guys something about the sponsor of this video, Tokyo Treat. Tokyo Treat is a subscription service that sends you Japanese snack boxes right to your home. Every month, you get 15 to 20 Japanese snacks from rare Kit Kat flavors like this hazelnut Kit Kat I got to exclusive Japanese drinks like this mystery Fanta, which tasted very refreshing. You also get a variety of snacks like these chips and cakes. They choose snacks from different cities each month, with this month being the city of Akiba. They explain their choices and what each snack contains in this booklet. If you're interested in getting a box, use my link in the description below, as you'll be helping out the channel tremendously. And now, let's get back to the video. So yeah, the first dish, which was the fried rice, was really lovely. It's just a simple fried rice, but the cured beef adds a nice desired saltiness, which was lovely. The next dish was the beef croquettes. I think they needed some more spice, since it was a bit bland. And perhaps some kind of sauce or a lemon would be nice to brighten it up. However, the way it is now is just... eh. And finally, the fruit macedonia, which is also very nice. Even though it's quite simple, it's just a nice refreshing way to end it all. Now for the final verdict on the cookbook. Is it worth it? Well, it depends on what you're going for. I think that for the casual fan, it's a really nice thing to get. If some days you want to cook something inspired by One Piece and you want some ideas, then I definitely get it. However, I have to say that the dishes are not always very accurate. The meat on the bones, for example, is just preposterous. It contains eggs. Like, I don't think there is even the slightest chance that Luffy's meat on the bones are made of chicken and contain eggs. Or Sanji's fried rice doesn't even contain octopus. So, most of the times, the dishes are not very accurate. However, I don't think that accuracy was what the book was going for. I think that they just simply wanted to pay homage to the beautiful cuisine of the One Piece world, which is just lovely. And uh, if you want to buy the book, then I have left an Amazon link in the description. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a nice day.